Okay, I'm so glad to be back with you. Remember now the previous two Bible studies to watch them. I just want to recap a little bit. Now let's look at this board. What does it say? Here we can see poison working through man and influencing him and bringing death to him. That death is the poison. It, the sin, it, it's the poison. It came from Adam. From Adam it went to all people. Romans 3.23 All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now, because all have sinned, Romans 6 verse 23 says, The wages of sin is death. So we had to die. But Jesus took our place. Now, as we died in Adam because of sin, we will live in right standing with God Almighty because of the work of Jesus Christ. Here, yeah, we, we died because of the work of Adam, because of sin, right? Here, yeah, this side, we must receive the implanted word, James 1 verse 21, which is able to save our souls. So this is the medicine. As we yield to the medicine, this medicine starts to work through us. Now, look now. God was setting us up in Christ to receive the Holy Spirit. Because you cannot live the Christian life without the Holy Spirit. I, I read to you Acts 1 verse 8. You shall receive power and be my witness. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you. This was called the promise of the Father. This is why when Jesus rose from the dead in Luke 24. Let me show you that. In Luke 24, Jesus now... He rose from the dead. Look what he told his disciples. He said in verse 46, Then he said to them, So it is written, and so it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name. So, repentance, you change your mind, you change your way of thinking, you say, I, I'm on the wrong track, I need to follow Jesus, right? You repent. Repentance is preached to you as a gift. <laughs> as a gift, my friend. Not a work from your side. As a gift. God gives you the possibility to change your mind. And then He gives you the word to change your mind to words. God the Father. Okay, repentance. Then it says forgiveness of sins. So because Jesus rose from the dead, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 17 says, we no longer in our sins. We are taken out from our sins. We are on this side now. Now you can receive the Holy Spirit. Look here what it says. And you are witnesses of these things, Jesus said. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But Tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endured with power from on high. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. What is this promise? Now, Luke wrote the book of Luke, but he also wrote the book of Acts. Now look at Acts chapter 1. Now he quotes from his own book the same words in Acts chapter 1. He says this, Verse 4. Now he's quoting from the book of Luke, the last chapter. He says, And being assembled together with them, Jesus commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me. For John, now he's going to tell you what that promise is. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So what did they have to wait for? For the promise of the Father. What was the promise of the Father? The baptism with the Holy Spirit. What is the baptism with the Holy Spirit? Verse 8 says, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, baptized in the Holy Spirit. Are you with me? So, we started now to look at the cross first. Because I want you to see that this 
qualified you to receive the Holy Spirit. What happened here? The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. This qualifies you. Why? Because you went to the cross. The wages of your sin is death. And you died in Christ. But the gift of God is eternal life. So you come and you accept this. Then you receive the gift of God. Which is eternal life. Now what is eternal life? John 17 verse 3. Eternal life is to know God. And you cannot know God unless you are born again. It says in John 3 verse 3. It says you cannot enter the kingdom of God or see the kingdom of God if you are not born again. What's born of the spirit is spirit. So just as you were born of, uh, from Adam and you were a sinner born a sinner just the same way you say that you are a saint now you are born again that gives you the right to say you're a child of God not your actions your actions will grow into right, right actions as you receive what I read to you, James 1 verse 21, the, receive the implanted word which is able to save your soul. Okay? So the point I want to make, you're a sinner, not because what you do, because of your birth. But now, if you've accepted this, you get born again and you're a saint, not because of what you do, but because of what you were born from. Okay? 1 John chapter 5 says this. Look at this. It says, if you confess Jesus as Lord. Look at this. Oh, I want to read it to you. 1 John chapter 5. Verse 1. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. To be born of God means you're a son of God. And when you are a son of God, Jesus is your brother, right? You are a son of God, born of God. Now, John 4 verse 24 says, God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The previous verse, verse says, the Father looked for people like that, who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Now, my dear friend, this is what happened. The cross dealt with you the cross Jesus took you in himself to the cross let me come to an end with us in, in Galatians chapter 2 Galatians 2 let me read it to you Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 I have been crucified with Christ that's the cross your old man it says, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Christ in me by the Holy Spirit, right? And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. You see, you died, but more than that, you also rose from the dead. You are a new man. And I'll carry on with that. Starting with Ephesians chapter 2, you can go there, then we'll talk.